Originally today's video was supposed to be a super quick video on how to choose the optimal neck bushing size and 30 caliber, specifically 300 Win Mag. But the results were so surprising I just had to make it a little bit longer today, so if you stick around through the whole story today, you might be just as surprised as I am. First things first, the bushings for today's test were provided to me by Short Action Customs. However, that is the only input they had in the video today. I have had and continue to get questions about what bushings you should use for your specific application, so I wanted to give you the best information I possibly can to improve your reloading experience, and they agreed to provide them. In case you're not familiar with these bushings, the very quick story is that these are universal to be used with other dies. They have dimensions of a half an inch by 0.375 inches, and they can be used in most resizing dies. There are applications they don't fit, you should check yours. However, today's application is the Reading S die. They work just fine. So why are these bushings special at all? Well, they've given me consistently the best concentricity and lowest average runout of any other option I've tested. Simply put, they just work well, and today's test is no exception. Without going into too much detail, I should probably tell you all the silly things that I did to sabotage today's test results. Number one, I originally intended to show you nothing but the force graphs, so you could just understand what level of neck tension you would get from each bushing. So that's kind of the basis for today's story. Number two, I've basically been on an H1000 for quite a while, so today's testing is going to have two separate lots of H1000 in it, and this is going to show up in the velocity data. Number three, I just swapped a scope on it, and so I had to use some of our rounds for today's test to re-zero it, so I'm not going to have groups for every option. Number four, the 300 Win Mag we're using for today's test has been a pain in the butt to load for, and I've had very little luck getting any decent groups out of it at all, like under an inch repeatedly is basically impossible. Some factory ammo has been like 3M away. Number five, the brass for today's test was just reused from some factory ammo. It's certainly not premium, it's just federal brass. And for the last thing, I didn't even bother setting up my good rest for it. I just used the standard bipod I had laying around because again, my expectations were super low. I only started out with 20 pieces of brass for today's test and I had to use one to generate my annealing code. So that left us with 19. All were annealed, full length size with a Reading S die, with various bushing sizes. A quick note, I did double check all of these bushings with pin gauges, and everyone measured exactly what it was labeled. So the question we came to answer today, how are we going to choose the correct bushing? If you're thinking about picking one of these up, I can certainly understand not wanting to buy all five, so today's test should give you a good idea where to start. The easiest way to get this measurement is to start off with a loaded round. My micrometers measure this at 0.33635 inches, so we're just going to round it to 0.336 inches. General wisdom I have heard is to choose a bushing two thousandths below this dimension. This would put us at 0.334. Personally, the way these bushings are machined, they tend to give a little less neck tension compared to their Reading counterparts, so if I knew absolutely no other details, I would personally go three thousandths under, but we'll just see what the data tells us today. You could accomplish the same task by measuring their brass thickness if you've got the right tools. Our brass thickness today is 14 thousandths, so Either way you do the math, 0.336 inches minus 308 is going to leave us to 28 thousandths divide in two, and we're going to get the 14 thousandths we measured. So whatever works for you, but today's data is going to be based on those dimensions you can adjust for you. Since we measured, we know that our loaded round started out at 0.336 inches, so I sized one piece of brass with a 0.336 bushing. That was so loose I could move it with my fingers, and so we didn't include it on today's test. So we're going to start out at 0.335 and go all the way down to 0.331. So we had four samples for each bushing, except the last one, 0.331 only had three samples. But we seeded them all on my amp press, and then we averaged the results. And this is the chart that we got. If you're not familiar with these charts, these are average seeding forces from each bushing size generated from my amp press. These are simply to illustrate the difference in what happens when we change the bushing size. This shows seeding force in pounds over distance in inches during the seeding process. Another fun thing for 300 Win Mag is they have a relatively short case neck, and since the bushings tend not to size the entire case neck, I wondered just how much neck tension we were going to be able to generate, but it does seem to be plenty. The first thing you'll probably wonder is why the graph for the 335 bushing is going crazy high at the end of the seating process, and this is because I unintentionally picked a charge weight that ended up being compressed. So our first four for the 335 bushing were all loaded with 78 grains of H1000, but to keep this from happening again, everything else was dropped to 76 grains. So most of our other bushings won't show compression. You can see that as the bushing size gets smaller, the neck tension increases. 
just like you'd expect. I'm not sure anyone would particularly choose the 335 bushing in this case because it's still a little light on neck tension. Looking at our bushings from 332 to 334, I think those are all in a good range. Going all the way down to the 331 bushing, we don't see a ton of increase from neck tension from the previous one. You really should ask yourself how much work you want your projectile doing as you're seating it into the case. Now, if you have a slightly different dimension, larger or smaller, you can make the adjustment. But what about performance, right? What's the real shocker here? As we look at this chart, we gotta remember there's two lots of powder as well as two different charge weights. Lots to unpack, but if you can hopefully understand the chart, you can see that the 335, the 334, and some of the 333 had the first powder lot, and after we ran out, we saw the velocities jump with the new lot of powder. But what most surprised me today were the group size. For our 334 bushing, 1.26 MOA group, I really didn't expect much better and wasn't really shocked. But for our 0.333 inch bushing, our group size dropped to 0.75 MOA. Maybe it's a fluke. For the 332, our group size dropped again to 0.68 MOA. 331, now it's only three shots, but 0.57 MOA. Now on any other day, for any other 300 Win Mag, I certainly might not be surprised, but for this one, I just couldn't believe it. So what's changed? And that's what I wanted to know. All the load development I've done previously was basically done with a full length sizing method or a full length size and an expander mandrel. And all that work was done before I had my amp press. So I loaded some of my previous configurations to find out what the difference was. Basically, I took our same 19 cases, resized them a different way, and that's how we generated this chart. The real surprise to me here was how much higher the seating force was on the stock die with the 307 expander mandrel. And also, just how close the force of just the standard Forester die was to our bushing dies. The peak seating force on the other three options are honestly pretty close together. But this chart really doesn't answer our question. What's different? Why was the performance so different? Well, then I started charting the standard deviation. If we chart the standard deviation of the seating force of all of our different sizing options, I think the answer becomes more clear. For the sizing option of the 332 bushing alone, the standard deviation is exceptionally low for most of the chart. There is the one spike at the end, and that has one individual round that's responsible for that because I hadn't settled the powder enough, and that was being a compressed load. These are all five that were tested with that, and you can see just overall how consistent they were, and that that was an anomaly, and again, due to compression of powder. When I measured the seating force on the five different options, I hadn't charted standard deviation, yet. So going to back and look at the seating force data, it's clear how much more consistent these were from round to round. If you remove the 335 bushing data, where we know we had issues with compressed loads, the standard deviation from round to round was well under 10 pounds of force. If you keep in mind the scaling on the chart, it's astonishing how much more consistent the bushing alone was. I cannot state with absolute certainty that these bushings are responsible for the accuracy increase that we saw today, but I can't ignore it either. I'm not sure if you'll be interested in a new chapter with the old 300 Win Mag, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're interested to see how these bushings work in other calibers, check out this video right here where I test these short action customs bushings in 223 and shot the smallest group I ever have in that caliber. It's pretty impressive if you ask me, but until next week, stay safe and small groups.